Say you're sat in a park watching the world go by, letting the breeze blow gently over your sensual yet masculine mustache, and a Neanderthal is walking down the path towards you. Do you think you could tell, ignoring the slight physical differences, do you think you could tell that they weren't a homo sapien just from their behavior? That's the question I'm going to try and answer today as we discuss how smart were Neanderthals, and hopefully these birds will shut up, but probably not. There's no physical or biological reason that Neanderthals couldn't produce language. DNA tests carried out on Neanderthal remains show that they had the gene FOXP2. This gene, which was initially called the language gene, is linked to fine motor skills but also to complex sound and speech. Its presence in both Neanderthals and humans suggests that it may have evolved in our common ancestor, which would make the origins of language extremely ancient indeed. This is backed up by the excavation of a 60,000-year-old Neanderthal burial in Kibara, Israel. Although the skull was crushed, excavators were able to uncover a hyoid bone in this Neanderthal's throat. This bone is essential for making the range of complex sounds that humans can produce, and for many paleoanthropologists, that's pretty much case closed on whether the Neanderthals could talk. Finally, they certainly had a brain large enough to produce something as complex as language. The average Neanderthal's brain may well be larger than yours, in fact. As my wife can tell you, size is not everything, that's for sure. Neanderthal brains were wider than ours, but not as tall. This has led some academics to believe that they had less gray matter, the part of the central nervous system that helps control speech, memory, perception, memory, self-control, and memory. All of these things, of course, help us live in complex societies. So what evidence do we have for Neanderthal society and civilization? Looking at gray matter again, Robin Dunbar of Oxford University believes the size of primate social groups is determined by the size of the neocortex. Humans have a large neocortex and can maintain relationships with roughly 150 individuals. Chimpanzees have a much smaller neocortex and live in groups of roughly 50 individuals. On Dunbar's scale, Neanderthals could probably maintain good relationships with roughly 120 individuals, very similar to humans. These 120 people would make up the wider community. Neanderthals would then probably live in groups of 30 or less. Neanderthals were also capable of showing compassion by caring for the sick and elderly. In Shanidar, Iraq, 10 individuals were found, some buried, some apparently crushed by falling rocks. One of those individuals, Shanidar 1, had severe wounds to the left-hand side of his face, probably caused by a traumatic blow of some kind. These wounds were so severe, it's likely he was blind and deaf on that side of his face. Clearly, the other Neanderthals in the group took care of this person whilst their wounds healed, and he ended up living to the ripe old age of around 50. That's pretty old for a Neanderthal who lived at least 35,000 years ago. Neanderthals also buried their dead, not at first perhaps. Neanderthals as a whole were around for about 300,000 years, and all the evidence we have of unambiguous burials post-dates 70,000 years. So this was clearly a behavior that they evolved and learned. According to Professor Paul Petit, of the 500 individual Neanderthals archaeologists have identified, 30 are defo burials. Although they vary in style, the vast majority contain no grave goods. Some graves do have sort of architectural features, such as heads being placed on or in between stones. And some do have potential grave goods, but it's difficult to be 100% sure. Some notable examples are Amud 7 from Israel. The burial of a Neanderthal child had the maxilla or face of a red deer placed on their lap. La Grotte du Regor du in France may have had the tibia of a brown bear placed by their legs. Finally, Dedirea 1 in Syria was found with their head placed on a rock with a flint near their chest. The big debate is whether the remains of these animals and these flint artifacts are deliberate grave goods and evidence of some sort of symbolic behavior, or just wound up in the graves by chance. The lack of grave goods doesn't necessarily mean that Neanderthals had less 
religion or symbolic behavior. Grave goods are as much about personal ownership as they are about religion or symbolism. It could be that Neanderthals had a religion as such, but they didn't have a sense of personal possessions, so they didn't see the value in burying tools or things like that with their dead friends and relatives. The very fact that Neanderthals buried anyone at all is really good solid evidence of higher cognitive ability and a sense of society. So can we see any more evidence of this in the tools that they produced in everyday life? For the 1.5 million years before the Neanderthals, the tool of choice for the hominid around town was the hand axe. Hominids would find a suitable stone and remove flakes to create the axe. With the arrival of Neanderthals though, we see the emergence of a new technology, Levallois points. Rather than chip away at a stone to create an axe, Neanderthals would remove flakes around the edge of the core and create the rough shape of the point they desired. They would then flatten the base to create a striking edge. Hitting it with a hammer stone, they would remove the point which could then be attached to a shaft and used as a spear. They could use the same core to create multiple points, allowing them to create tools much more rapidly than earlier hominids. It also shows that they had the capacity for forward planning. It allowed Neanderthals to range further and further away from sources of flint. And it's sort of counterintuitive. This is a skill you would have to be taught, which is again further evidence of language. It's really a huge technological breakthrough, but one mark against the Neanderthals though is that they never advanced beyond this technology. In the hundreds of thousands of years they were alive. Were they afraid of change? Was there some sort of cognitive block in their brains that couldn't see past this development? It's hard for us to say. It's easy in our modern world to dismiss just how much of a breakthrough these little tools were. We used to think that tool use and production was really a defining feature of humanity, but now we really appreciate more just how much different animals produce tools, from crows to capuchins, lots of different species are at it. But what Neanderthals did with level wire points and their Mysterian technology is really create a tool to produce tools. This is really evidence of taking that extra creative step and having that extra mental ability, I guess, and shows such forward planning that is really a very human trait. In terms of symbolic artifacts, it's fair to say the record is sparse and a little controversial. As mentioned earlier, there are some burials that contain the remains of animals. There is an alleged flute from Slovenia that wasn't found in association with any Neanderthal artifacts and also could have been produced by Homo sapiens or even just a carnivore nibbling a bone. There are markings from Gorham Cave which could well have been produced by Neanderthals, but it's difficult to date these exactly. There is a very interesting site in Italy called Fumani Cave. Dated to around 44,000 years ago, it seems the Neanderthals in this area were deliberately removing the long feathers from the wings of birds. The lack of really solid evidence for symbolic activity is probably the biggest divide between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Although it is interesting what little evidence of symbolism there is, is dominated by the remains of animals. I truly do not believe you would be able to spot a Neanderthal walking down the street. That's just my personal opinion. I'm sure some academics would disagree with me. I'm just a layman on YouTube, but I truly believe that you could not spot a Neanderthal. One final thing I'll say to uh, prove my point is that the Homo sapiens that met Neanderthals had children with them. We know that now from advances in DNA technology. Everyone who is not a sub-Saharan African has around 2% Neanderthal DNA. So clearly they were human enough for our ancestors to have sex with. Now, I'm not saying that just because we had sex with them that's the, the definitive proof of humanity. Humans will have sex with some weird and freaky things. We always have such a good time together. For their DNA to survive in modern humans, we didn't just have sex with these guys, we had families with them. We had children together. Children that were so successful that they had children. They, they had enough smarts that they could live in 
human society and have children who could live in human society. This raises pretty spooky and fundamental questions though. If the Neanderthals were so intelligent, if they had so much in common with us, why did they die out? Well, that's the question I'm going to answer next week as we discuss why the Neanderthals went extinct. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Oh, what a cliffhanger I've left it on there. I really do thank you guys for watching. More people saw my last Neanderthal video than anyone I've ever made before. It's pretty humbling and anxiety causing, but really great. So consider subscribing and check out one of the other videos on the screen.